Welcome to Wheelock's Latin chapter 14. In this chapter, we're going to be looking at the third declension I stem. We'll be looking at irregular third declension I stem uh, noun with, and we'll be looking at various uses of the ablative case, including ablative of means, ablative of accompaniment, and uh, ablative of manner. There we go. All right, so let's review a little bit on our third declension noun endings that we learned a few chapters back. We have masculine and feminine, which are all the same endings, and they are, on the left side of the chart here, blank, is, e, m, e, vocative is also blank, because if you remember your vocative rule, whatever is in the nominative will be in the vocative. S in the plural, um, ibis, s, ibis, s. So make sure you note the macron over the dative singular i, and macrons over the nominative and accusative plural s. Now here's a couple of um, examples of masculine and feminine nouns. We have rex regis and virtus virtutis. And of course on the far right you've got the neuter corpus corporis. And of course the difference in the neuter endings are that the accusative will be the same as the nominative. So corpus corpus. And the plural we have an a instead of the S. So you have corpora, corporum, corporibus, corpora, corporibus, corpora. So a ah, in the nominative and accusative plural for the neuter, and of course for the vocative as well. So that was our third declension, masculine and feminine. Now this week in chapter 14, we'll be introduced to third declension I stem nouns. Now, if you remember me saying that if you learn the endings as you go. It will be beneficial for you as the chapters move through. Well, this is one of those weeks that this absolutely is very, very helpful because the third declension I stem endings are nearly identical to the third declension, uh, regular third declension. So let's take a look at this chart here. On the far left, we have, again, the third declension as we just went over it. Masculine and feminine is blank, is, e, m, e, S um ibis s ibis. Notice I have left off the vocative here because because as we mentioned before, vocative is is very rare, and so we don't generally include it in the charts. I did include it in the previous one, but we won't look at it for the rest of this chapter. So those are your endings for masculine and feminine. Let's look at the masculine and feminine endings for the third declension. I stem blank is e m e s e um. Ibis, S, Ibis. Now, if you notice, the only difference here is um becomes ium in the genitive singular. That is the only difference here between third declension masculine and feminine and third declension I stem masculine and feminine. You simply add an I to the genitive, sing, uh, genitive plural, excuse me, and it becomes ium instead of um. So ium. Blank is E, M, E, S, ium, Ibis, S, Ibis. And that is your masculine and feminine endings. That's pretty easy. So again, if you've learned third declension, you've learned third declension I stem with one minor variation. Now, neuter is not much of a difference. If you remember, you're used to in neuter having an A in the nominative and accusative plural. We are going to see that. And you're used to seeing that in the nominative uh, singular, it matches the accusative singular. So remember the rule is whatever's in the nominative is also the accusative. So those two things are going to come into play. We're already seeing the I turning, uh, excuse me, the um turning into ium in genitive plural. And that only leaves one variation. So let's look at these here. There's the neuter rule, whatever's in the nominative so must be in the accusative. So you have blank, blank in the nominative and accusative singular. We have a ah and a ah in the nominative and accusative plural. That is going to comp uh, um, comport with our third declension I stem. Difference here is the a in the nominative plural and the accusative plural adds an i. This is why we're calling it the I stem because we're going to see an i added in a couple of places. We see it in the genitive plural and now we see it in the nominative and accusative plural. So there we got ia and ia. One other place we're going to see, oh, we got to memorize, remember the neuter rule, whatever's in the nominative is in the accusative. There we go. Here's the one other change. Ablative singular was an E, becomes an I. That is the only other change in third declension I stem. 
So our third declension, uh, I should say third declension neuter, I stem neuter. So here are your endings in third declension, I stem neuter. Blank is E, blank E, uh, it's E, Ia, Ium, Ibis, Ia, Ibis. So it's a short I, it's not a long I like the date of singular, but in ablative singular, we got an I, but it's shortened, okay? E, Ia, Ium, Ibis, Ia, Ibis. So those are your third declension I stem. This should be pretty easy to nail down. Now there's one other noun in third declension I stem that we need to know. It is an irregular I stem. And this is the word wis. Wis, V-I-S. And if you will notice a characteristic long I in most of the forms, you simply need to memorize these forms. And you've got wis, nominative singular, genitive is wis as well, same form. We, in dative singular, whim, we, ablative singular. And the plural, here's where it becomes even more irregular, the stem jumps to a V-I-R. So it's we're s, we're e um, we're e ibus, we're s, we're ibus. So basically your third declension, I stem, plural endings are intact here, s, Ium, ibis, s, ibis. But the base is vir, unlike the singular for this word where the base is simply a vi and the endings are kind of all over the place. Wis, wis, we, whim, we. I mean, you can kind of see the, the, the genitive uh, singular it does have the vis, so that works. And the dative is a vi, yes. The accusative, it becomes a vim instead of a vem. And uh, we do see a vi in the ablative singular. So these are forms you just need to memorize. Wis, wis, we, wem, we, weres, weirium, weirbus, weres, weirbus. And uh, this word, a couple of things we need to note. Don't confuse this with the noun weir, weiri, the word man or husband or hero that we learned back in second declension uh, nouns. Because in the plural, they look very similar. Because in the plural, you've got weiri, weirorum, weiris, weiros, weiris. Again, that's a second declension masculine noun. But, um, but it looks similar. But you don't need to confuse these. If it has second declension endings, E orum isosis, then it's the word for men. If it has the third declension endings, s eum ibis, s ibis, then you know it's the word wis. That means, here's a translation, in the singular you will translate it force, in the plural strength. So make sure you note the difference in the singular force and in the plural strength. So let's look at this. You may notice that I have two categories for third declension I stem masculine and feminine. There's parasyllabolic. I cannot stand saying that word. I just cannot say it very well. And then there's a two consonant base category. So let's take a look at these. All of the third declension I stems will fit into one of three categories. Here's the first category. Parasyllabic. Parasyllabic. That of course means equal syllables. So this category says that if the gender is masculine or feminine, and the nominative case ends in either IS or ES. In this case, it's IS, right? And then if there are equal syllables in the nominative and genitive case, singular, then this is a third declension I stem perisyllabic noun. Here we have kiwis, kiwis, kiwi, kawim, kawe, kawes, kawim, kawibis, kawes, kawibis. Another example that was a masculine uh, version here, or masculine example, uh, meaning citizen. In the plural, we have another example, the word uh, nubes, meaning cloud. And notice it's nubes in the nominative and nubis in the genitive. So that fits the category. It's either masculine or feminine, check. Number two, nominative case either ends in is or es, check. We've got that. And then the nominative and genitive cases have the equal number number of syllables. In this case, they have two syllables, nubes, nubis. And because of that, that means these, this word is a third declension I stem noun. All right, here's another category. This is the two consonant base category. There are some third declension I stem that again are masculine or feminine, mostly feminine in this category. And the nominative case will end in either an S or an X. Here you have the example of the word erps, city, it's feminine, and it ends, the nominative singular ends in an S. 
The base will end in two consonants. So if you look at the genitive, you drop that IS ending, and then we can see what the, uh, the base is. The base is herb, and the, uh, the, two, the, the base ends in two consonants, R and B. And because it is masculine and feminine, nominative ends in S or X, and the base, which you see in the genitive, ends in two consonants. And the last thing is, most frequently, the nominative case is monosyllabic. In other words, just one syllable. And here we have herbs. And if those four categories all line up, then this is indeed a third declension I stem in the category of two consonant base. All right. All right. Let's look at one final category. This is the neuter category. Third declension I stem neuter. This is pretty simple. Gender is neuter. And the nominative singular will either end in E a L or A R. And if those two categories line up, then this is a third declension I stem, and you'll need to make sure you use the third declension I stem neuter endings. Here we have the example mare, and it is neuter, it means C. And in the uh, nominative singular, you see that it ends in an E. Therefore, this is a third declension I stem neuter, and you'll want to use the third declension I stem neuter ending. So blank is E. E, e, ablative singular is E. Uh, ia, ium, ibis, ia, ibis. All right, so those are your third declension I stem neuter nouns. Now, again, here's that third declension irregular we just looked at in the singular force and the plural strength, wis. And here are the rules for that one singular is V plus ending, uh, singular ablative is ending is changed to an I. Plural is weir plus endings, and we simply need to memorize these forms. Genitive and dative singular are rare. That's the reason why they're in parentheses. They are rare, but you will occasionally see them. All right, there we go. There we go. Drop that R, the IR in front of them. All right. Again, don't confuse this with second declension masculine, the word man. Here you can see it. This is a second declension masculine noun. We're, 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 o, we're, room, we're, o, we're, 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 You can see they're very similar, most particularly in the plural, but uh, you can note the difference just by looking at the endings. Second declension endings means it means uh, it is, this is the word for man. If it's got third declension endings, this is force or strength for the plural. All right, a couple of grammar concepts we're going to learn. We've been talking about ablative case since we started uh, our study of Wheelock's. And we've said, generally speaking, that ablative case is used as an object of a preposition. And that is true. But the use of this prepositional phrase uh, is nuanced. And we're going to have several uh, nuances that we're going to learn this particular chapter. The ablative case is called the adverbial case because it is used to modify or limit the action of the verb. The ablative case is used in a wide variety of uses, including this week we're looking at the ablative of means, also called the ablative of instrument, the ablative of accompaniment, and the ablative of manner. Let's look at the ablative of means or instrument first. The definition is thus, the ablative of means is a noun or pronoun that answers the question, by what means or by what instrument was the action of the verb carried out? You will recognize this because the noun or pronoun in the ablative case will not have a preposition. So if you simply have an ablative noun, no preposition in front of it, then it is quite possible that it is an ablative of means or instrument. And the way you would translate it generally is using the preposition in English, the English preposition by, in other words, like by means of or with. Those would be two, two prepositions that would be acceptable. Let's look at a couple of examples. Here we have literas, stilo, scripsit. All right, so number one, it is an ablative and it has no preposition. Number two, it answers the question, by what means did he write the letter? And the translation for this would be with a pen. So scripsit, he wrote, literas, the letter, stilo, with the pen. So no preposition, therefore it's most likely ablative means. And so we translate with a pen. He wrote the letter with a pen. 
Now let's look at the ablative of accompaniment. The ablative of accompaniment is a noun or a pronoun that answers the question, with whom is the action of the verb carried out? You will recognize this form when the noun or pronoun is in the ablative case and it is preceded with the preposition cum. And you'll translate it, as we've already learned, cum with. So here's a couple of examples. Cum amicis, there we go, cum amicis venerunt. So number one, it is an ablative with the preposition cum. Number two, it answers the question, with whom were they coming? So therefore, it is an ablative of accompaniment. And we will translate this with friends. When erunt, they came, cum amicis, with friends. Pretty easy example there. Let's look at the last usage of the ablative we're looking at today, ablative of manner. This is defined by an adjective, excuse me, a noun or pronoun that answers the question, with, uh, how, in what manner, is the action of the verb carried out? You will recognize the noun or pronoun in the ablative case with preposition cum, and you will translate it with. So notice it's still got cum, you're going to have the preposition cum in front of it, but it's answering a different question. It's answering the question how or in what manner is the action of the verb being carried out. So slightly different uh, than the ablative of accompaniment we just looked at. That one is with whom is the action being carried out. This one is, in what manner is the action being carried out? But in both cases, the preposition cum is used, and you translate it with. Here's an example. Cum keretate venerunt. So number one, we have an ablative with the preposition cum. We ask ourselves, what question is it answering? And we decide that it's answering the question, in what manner were they coming? Therefore, this is an ablative of manner, and we will translate it with speed. Venerunt, they came, cum keretate, with speed. And so therefore, this is an ablative of manner. It's de describing how they came. All right, so this is three new uses of the ablative that we'll be looking at this week. And there'll be many more uses of the ablative to come, but this is the first drop in the bucket. Don't forget to study your vocabulary as always. We will have a quiz later.